Samuel. Sir. What can you tell me about yourself? I started as a teacher. The microfinance bank you work with, Carl. Are you a co-owner in that business? At the moment, no. Are you able to demo it for us? Um, yes, of course. I love your brain. <laughs> <laughs> now, one entrepreneur got four lions on their knees. Like, this guy knows his onions. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but there's this joy I have when I see an entrepreneur. When I see lions fight for a particular entrepreneur, it just makes me feel like some type of very cool. With ah, It's good to know your onions last last when you're in a business. So guys, so guys, so guys, um, I'm going to be giving you, um, I'm going to be giving you the intel of what happened in the episode two of the season two um, in the lion's den you guys so the first episode we actually saw three entrepreneurs get into the den but this time guys it was a usual four entrepreneurs came into the den and hey out of four entrepreneurs only one person went home with a deal guys you're going to be getting all that full gist in a short in a short while but before i proceed with this conversation um if you're new to the channel thank you for stopping by in here we talk about reality shows and real-time stories please subscribe by clicking on the red subscribe button right now to be a part of this um community and of course turn on the post notification bell so that you don't miss a thing um and you you get to follow the trend of conversation of course here so guys let me just go into the gist and um, we had four entrepreneurs coming to the den and guys a 15 million naira deal was actually sealed and it was a hot deal <laughs> out of those four entrepreneurs who do you think took home the money um anyway so we had the first person who got into the den the first person who got into the den was a guy that had actually created crafted a very interesting business in his tricycle business and you know when you know you guys know how it rolls when you come into the den, you pitch, you tell them what you want, how much you want. Um, you give them a brief of your business scope and then they just, the lions keep shooting. So this guy actually pitched, very wonderful business idea. But the problem with his business was his margins were really low, was really, really low. Um, he said they had made about 11% um, when we talk about his margin and his um, profits, margins and all that. And so the lions started kicking him with a lot of questions. I mean... I think um, when we look at all the lions that really like trig, like hit him questions, one of the very interesting questions that I think really touched me, that made me feel like some type of way was when Kiari Booker was like, you know what, tell me a little about you. And, you know, um, Samuel told us that he was actually a teacher before now and that somehow the, this, um, the Keke business style um, transportation thing came into him and I was like, okay, you know what? Um, that I'm going to go into this, and then he got into it, and he's pitching. You know, I'm sorry I didn't really was jump into that um call on time, so I didn't know how much he was asking for. But the truth was, um, at the end of the day, you know, it was more like he was really fighting to get at least one lion to his corner. But um, so I'm just gonna tell you what the questions that he that he was asked. Um, so Kiari was a person who actually asked him a lot of questions. I even thought Kiari. I mean, after asking all those questions and seeing the guy say the things that he said i felt like kiari was going to like bite into the business but there was something very interesting kiari said kiari Buka said um the problem is that you have a very big business but the fund you are asking for is too small it's not going to be able to achieve this dream and i'm like wow wow these lions are real so if there's anything i love about the lions they always try to keep it very real they let you know when you're doing it too much they t let you know when you're doing it too small so i think the major problem with this young man was they had a problem with how he had arranged his business. They felt like he needed more planning, more structure. Um, so his business was just a bit about everywhere, not really structured. So I felt like that was one of the reasons why the Lions did not invest. Because we've actually seen episodes where um, entrepreneurs come into the den, they ask for small funds. The Lions are like, okay, I'm interested. I think you need more funds. And they raise their funds for them. So I, I actually felt like him pitching a small fund was like a proof that he hadn't done his homework. But... That was not the main reason why he didn't get the fund. I just felt like he, he his coordination was just a little laid back. He, at the end of the day, we actually saw him just say, you know what, I'm going to get to plan myself. All, for, all five lions opted out of the deal. Nobody invested in Samuel's tricycle business and because he felt like um, the overhead cost. Like they just felt like the business wasn't making enough money and that was literally it. 
Okay, guys. Um. So, anyways, Samuel literally um said he had a second business, and Audrey was like, I don't know, but I feel like um this entrepreneur should not even be telling this guy this lines that they have another business. I think it just makes them like give a reason why they want to invest in something else if they don't like your offer. I don't know, but we actually saw Samuel talk about his starch business, how he wanted to st- turn starch into like flour and i'm like guy you wouldn't have shared that secret like maybe somebody's watching and who knows somebody might just pack your business idea i don't know man but it's just me feeling like hey that um him pitching that business was was like not necessary i don't know but th- that was just my thoughts um for samuel like i felt like he would have just packaged himself and come and wow us with his idea and just share it like that you know in the open where people are watching who knows anything can happen but hey it is what it is i mean i think business is all about competition it's about who starts it it's about who actually understands the dream and drives forward so the second entrepreneur we saw was actually this um young man and he really looks like he knew what he was there to do so he runs this tele um financial company that takes care of um transactions like you know teletransactions um for your banking needs and all that and for each transaction um they get like five five naira cuts for their for theirs he was asking for 50 million um and you know his business really looked interesting bolaji came in like almost immediately and was like you know what i love your mind um one of the interesting questions um bolaji asked him was um who owns the business that you're running because he said he was into he was running in partnership with a financial institution and Bolaji asked the question, which financial institution, a bank or a microfinance? And he said a microfinance. And the question was, how, who owns the company? How many percent do you own? He said he owned 60% in the company and that he had left 10% for his staffs. And I'm like, hey, this guy sounds like a smart guy already. He talked about keeping 25% for investors and, you know, that that was what he was willing to give, um, 50 million for 25 percent and then at the end of the way he finished his speech you know Bolaji was actually very 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 impressed and you know immediately this guy did not even wait for other lions to pounce you know we actually heard Bolaji say you know what i like your mind i like the way you think i'm going to give you all the money you want gave his conditions and you know right after Bolaji was through audrey chipped in audrey was like you know what I think um, I'm going to, Bolaji, would you want us to come in? We're interested. Kiari, I think this is what you're going to like to do too. And, you know, we saw at the Nikkei say, uh, why, why did you guys leave me? I'd like, it was quite interesting to see that this guy just pitched a very simple business. Um, but he really looked like he knew what he was doing. And immediately we saw this lion was like fighting for him. So at the end of the day, we had four lions in support um, to join, um, three lions joining Bolaji to pitch I'm um, rather to invest in the business and then there is something about see I'm not gonna lie I miss um Dan Garem I miss him I know he does not do counter offers like Paul and um, Wanibi does but the, the questions I'm missing that kind of question vibes that comes from Paul's um Mr. Dan ah I don't know I'm missing that question like his question pattern i'm missing it so we actually saw you know um paul come with a counter offer and post counter offer so let me give you guys the gist on what Bolaji's offer was so Bolaji actually decided to i mean one of the things that actually bought Bolaji over was when he asked this guy can you um can you demo it for us and he demoed it he showed how people can pay in their transactions online you know like it was quite cute it was quite cute using the mobile phone, how you can make your transactions with your phone with ease and all that. And I, I think that was what bought Bolaji. So Bolaji made the offer of 50 million um, for 35%. That was Bolaji's initial offer. And then he said, you know, how do you operate? The guy said he has, um, he uses a, a space. And Bolaji was like, you know what, I'm going to give you um, a space for 18 months. Um, gave his offers. And you guys, um, Paul came with a counter offer. Now, Paul's counter offer was that he was going to give him all the money he wants. 
at 25%, exactly what this guy was looking for. And he really came with this enticing thing of, you know what, I know this board of director, I know some microfinance, I have shares in this. I have, like, I, I really liked Paul's swag when he came with that pitch. Like, this is one of the things that I've, I'm really looking forward to see in the Lions Den in Nigeria. I really want to see these Lions, like, compete instead of join and join themselves like a bandwagon and always go and invest in people's business. Like, I, I always, I want to see that fight amongst lions but i don't know I, I really i'm not seeing it in the nigerian version i wish we can actually have the lions like fights give counter offers and then this um these people just pick what they want the entrepreneurs pick what they want so i just saw paul do that i mean his offer was actually legit better than um bolaji but you know bolaji is a business person Immediately paul gave his own um offer of 25 percent but was like you know what i'm going to bring it down to 30 percent and you can buy back um i think he said you can buy back five percent later on and i'll borrow you one naira <laughs> for you to be able to loan you one as be able to pay back you know at the end of the day it was more like four lions were fighting for the entrepreneur and then um paul was on his lane fighting and paul made it very clear i want to do this investment alone because he knew it was a big deal um so at, at the end of the day we actually saw this young man going for um Bolaji's offer and I was like okay amazing amazing I think that's um that was his best that was a good decision because we all know Bolaji is an investment banker so he knows more when it comes to financial institution and I think that really paid off um guys the third person we saw was uh, this man who had a honey business you know he was actually asking for just 10 million naira um Lions gave a lot of reasons. Well, I, um, I mean, we saw people like um, Adenike say, you know what, somebody's doing a business like this, I already invested. Because of conflict of interest, I will not be able to invest in your business. You know, all the Lions kept withdrawing. It was like a regular business. And, you know, he talked about his branding. You know, Audrey was interested in that, that honey business. But for some reason, I think it was just the presentation style um, that really kind of, made her not to have that confidence to actually invest in the business um and then the fourth entrepreneur we actually saw was this woman like this go getting more i mean i really love the vibe i think most of the entrepreneurs who came um in the lion's day in this period were more of people who had businesses that need that the loan would solve their problem and i think this is one thing that most entrepreneurs need to do like a check to know if they really need an investor who is com coming to take equity um or they are looking for somebody to just give them running capital to run their business. Because when you have a business that is already growing at a fast pace, I don't think you really need investors to come in. Anyway, I don't know, but some businesses really do not need these investors to come in and just take a large percent of the shares of the company. Because um, I feel when once you have a running business, just know what you want. Um, maybe consult somebody and then you find out what it is. Because we actually noticed that most of the people who came into the den this period actually had good businesses but did not get investment not because their offers were not good but because the lions felt like these guys needed more of a loan than a lion an investor i don't know but i think we need to do that uh, mathematics so the fourth entrepreneur we had was elizabeth um and elizabeth gave this very interesting story about how she had started a business from three thousand that her uncle had given her in 2009 i guess and how she had grown the money and I'm like, wow, 3,000 naira, hey, to, and like making turnover of over 60, 65 million or 60 million. I mean, she really talked about, she had a supermarket, she had a, um, um, a bakery, and then she had this Gary processing thing, Coco Gary. It was just quite interesting. Um, Elizabeth really had a very big business. I mean, she reminds me of the other lady that he, um, that Rhoda that came with the bread and thing. So it was quite interesting. Um, Elizabeth was actually, how much was she asking for? I think she was asking for 20 million, I guess. But at the end of the day, you know, she didn't get the loan because the lions felt like, um, I didn't give the advice of, you know what, what your business really needs is out of, you need to focus on something. If it's the bakery, focus on it. I mean, if it's the Gary rather, focus on it. If it's the, um, the supermarkets, focus on it. Just focus on a particular line of your business because you're multitasking and this is not. And I think I really like this advice that Adenike always gives us entrepreneurs because it kind of uh, would help them focus more and concentrate on what they really need for their business to grow. You know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, even though she actually had 
good numbers um she couldn't get any investment so anyways unfortunately even though elizabeth had a good business plan um she knew what she wanted to use the money to do she had a solid business already that she just needed funds you know she, none of the lions were willing to invest in her business it just felt like she needed more of a loan than an investor and Bolaji was still that man who was able to say, you know what, I'm going to help you. I'm going to put a, uh, a call across to your bank and I'm going to help see that you secure this loan to do your business and fly. And I'm like, that's a win. I mean, at the end of the day, we actually had Elizabeth say, you know what, I would really appreciate it if you, if you could make that call. Because, you know, to getting loans in Nigeria is like a big drag and a deal. Um, I don't know why getting loans is so difficult in this part of the world, but I wish... If this could be facilitated, it would really help those um, entrepreneurs do well in their business. So, guys, that was really the wrap um, in the Lion's Den um, episode 2, season 2. You know, um, out of the four entrepreneurs who came in, only 50, a 50 million naira deal was done, signed, sealed, and delivered with four amazing Lions um, hopping into that particular deal. Um, you guys, I mean, I, th I think there's so much to learn from this. We really need to understand what our business needs, whether it needs an investor or it actually just needs running capital to grow. Um, whatever it is, guys, that was literally everything that went down. Um, yeah, I hope I didn't forget anything, but whatever, um, that's it. <laughs> you guys, um, let me know your thoughts um, in the comment section. Now, um, there is also, um, I think um, they've already started releasing, um, the information about applying for season three so i probably would check that out and maybe come back here and give you guys an update on how to apply if you'd like to apply for the season three i like i think i like the team and how they're actually facilitating um how people are coming into this thing early and on time i don't know but the lion's den is actually a big reality show that i think is helping a lot of entrepreneurs there in just two episodes guys the first episode we saw 180 million dollar deal this time we're seeing 50 million naira deal. That's a lot already, guys. 200 and, I mean, 30 million naira. It's a lot of money, if you ask me. You guys, this is really, really it. Um, Yeah, I'm going to see you all in another episode of The Lion's Den. But you guys, don't forget to check out my older videos. I literally talk about all these things step by step. You probably want to check out some of my popular questions that the 10 popular questions that the Lions ask if you're thinking of applying or going for, for any of this kind of reality shows i've been able to share some videos about that check my playlist you have a handful of that you guys thank you so much for your watch time so see you next time it's been julie on personality highlights